Hello, what is up guys? Evil Duos Arm here today, and today I have for you a video where we're going to be continuing our series on creating your very own 2D side-scrolling game. In this episode, what we're going to do is go ahead and create a floor tile set and a map for your, our player to play in. So we're not going to be playing in this demo world anymore. We're going to go ahead and create our very own first level. So to do that, we're going to need to make some new folders to go ahead and put some new assets into to go ahead and build our level. So what you're going to do is navigate back out to the content tab in our little browser over here. You're going to create a new folder, so right-click new folder to create a new folder. And the folder you're going to create is called level items. We're going to put all of our world items, all of our world environmental items inside of this folder. Inside of the level items folder, we're going to create our floors folder. This floors folder is going to contain all of our basically our flowers, our platforms, and those sorts of things for our level. Inside that floors folder, you're going to need to create two more folders called actors and sprites. And just like before, we're going to go into the sprites folder. Inside the sprites folder, we're going to drag in all of our tiles that we uploaded in the very first episode of the series. So what you're going to do is navigate to the source folder that we created in that first episode. Inside of that folder, there's going to be a file called tileset. Inside that tileset folder, you're going to look for the file that's named PNG. In the PNG, we have three sets of files we need to copy in. First, we have our background image that we're going to use as like the backdrop for our world. We have our objects, which are our bushes, our trees and stuff to put in the level. And then finally, we have the actual floor pieces or the platform pieces. So just go ahead, shift click, select them all and drag them into this thing. Wait for the little plus to pop up and copy them all in. You're going to need to do this for all the images. So go ahead and get on that. After you have everything uploaded into the content browser over here, what you're going to want to do is go ahead and shift click, select everything, right click, extract sprites. You hit sprite actions, create sprites right here, that first option. That's going to create the sprites for each of these different items. At this point, you could separate these two things because there's a lot of different files here um, to make it a little easier on yourself. So actually, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in here and click new folder. And after I get the new folder placed in, I'm going to go ahead and drag in all of the sprites. I'm just going to go ahead and click on all of the sprites. And just so you know, all of the sprites are the ones with the little blue icon. All the little red icon underneath are your PNG files that you uploaded originally. So just going to go ahead and drag those into this new folder that we created over here. Move them all right there. So now all of our sprites are inside that new folder. We can go ahead and just name that sprites as well. So we'll go ahead and rename that folder. So just right click, rename, and call it sprites. From here, what we're going to do is hop over into the actors folder. So in the actors folder, we're going to create a new actor. So as you can see, this took me a couple tries to go ahead and get this right. So uh, I finally figured it out, finally got it to work. So we're going to go ahead and do it for real this time. So everything that I already showed you is how you're going to go to get to this point. So what you're going to do, right click, blueprint class, actor. So this actor, we're going to go ahead and call it base floor. So we know what we're talking about when we get to it. You're going to go ahead and open up the base floor uh, actor that we just created, and we're going to add a component. The component we're going to add is we're looking for a thing called sprite. So if you type in sprite, you're looking for paper sprite is the second option right there on the menu. Go ahead and click paper sprite and drop it in. Now we're going to need to go ahead and drop 10 of these in. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a, a, basically a five by two little grid for our platform. So uh, to go ahead and drop more of these in, all you're going to do is hit click on it, control C, control V, 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 V. So uh, we've got five across the way, and we actually didn't need that fifth one because we're going to drag and drop them down after. So we have five total across this. What we need to do is we need to set the X position of each of these and increase it by 127 each time. We want a little bit of overlap on these. So what you're going to do is go ahead and click on the first ones already set. So we need to go to paper sprite one, which is our second option. All we're going to do is shift that 127 units to the left. So just type in 127 in this box right here, this little X box, which is the red. The red is always X, Y, Z. So the X value, we're making that 127. What we're going to do next is go to paper sprite two, change that to one uh, to 254, 254. That's going to move that 254 over. Next one we're going to do is three. 81. 381 is going to move that one over. And then finally, we need to go ahead and set this to 508 for our final sprite. Okay, so all of our sprites are now located at those different distances. The reason we did that is because each of the tiles that we downloaded earlier, are, uh, they're 128 pixels across. So what we want to do is keep everything spaced just enough so it overlaps a tiny, tiny bit. So go ahead and drag this off to the side, open back up your Unreal Engine thing, go back into our level items folder that we created to put all of our sprites in. We're going to go to floor, sprites, sprites, and there's all of our sprites. So the ones we're going to be using for this are going to be one, two, and three for this first row. So what you want to do is select paper sprite one, this very first option right here, our first paper sprite, and drag the sprite over to this box that you see highlighted in green over here on the right. Just drag and drop the sprite into that box. Fantastic. Next, we're going to go to paper sprite one, Drop in sprite number two. Then we're gonna to go to sprite number two, drop in two. Paper sprite three, put in number two. And then finally, paper sprite four, we want the end piece, which is three. 
So now, as you can see, we have a little platform right here on our screen over on this main viewer, and I'll go ahead and maximize that to show you a little bit better. We have our little platform ready to go. So this is our first level of our platform. We're going to go ahead and add a second level of the platform below. So what we're going to want to do is Control C, Control V each of these uh, tiles. So Control C, Control V. You do have to do this one at a time. Um, for some reason, when you do Shift All, it doesn't place them in the right location. So just go across the list and drop a, another copy of that one down. So starting back at 5 now, what we want to do is move this down 127 in the Z direction. So the Z direction is the blue tile over here. So we're going to type in negative 127. That's going to move a tile down 127 units. Same thing as before, we're going to go right across the list. Negative 127 in the Z. Paper Sprite 7, negative 127, all the way across uh, to go ahead and get these all set. Additionally, what you could do if you wanted to do this faster is you can click uh, each one of these. So it's 5, 6, 7, 8, and uh, 9. So all of those tiles, and we want to set them all to negative 127. So the location transform thing up here, once again, you just type in negative 127, and it'll move all of them to the negative 127 position. After you've gone ahead and do this, make sure you compile and save. Drag this back over to the right, and we're going to be dropping in those tiles once again. So number five, what we want is sprite four. This is the left side of the uh, of the wall here. So we're going to drop sprite four in there. For six, seven, and eight, we want the middle piece, which is sprite five. So we can control select all of those options, drag the sprite into that, and it will change that to the middle one for all of those. Finally, we want to change sprite nine to number six, which is the right side ending of our platform. And boom, just like that, we have our platform. So now we're going to go ahead and compile and save this and show you what it looks like in the world. So we're going to go ahead and maximize the game world, minimize this. If we went ahead and drop this in, so to get back to this folder with it in here, we're going to want to go to the Actors folder, and we want our base floor piece. It's right here. So we're going to drag this into the world, and if we drop it into the world, um, when we hop in and hit play, you will see that there's a little bit of a line down the middle. I don't know if you can make it out on the YouTube video here, but there is, in fact, a little line um, through the middle of the platform, and that doesn't look very good. We don't like that little line. That little line is because the sprites have a little like green thing underneath them all. So uh, to get rid of that, what we're going to do is hop back into the base floor tile, and what we want to do is we want to take this bottom row, so the uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, these sprites right here. I'll go ahead and maximize this so you can see it a little bit better. 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, this back row, what we want to do is we want to move it out about 5 units. So to move it out of the page 5 units, what you're going to do is go to the same menu that we were just in over here, the transform, and we're going to type in the number 5. That's going to push the platform 5 units in front of us. Go ahead and hit and compile, save, and then if we hit play again to preview it, you will see that that line is gone. So it also doesn't really mess with the platform itself is how it looks because this is a 2D game, so everything is looking at it head down or face down. So the player will never actually see that the fact that that bottom of that platform is uh, disjointed. It will always appear the same size. So this is a neat little trick. Same thing is, I don't know if you can even tell um, on this YouTube video with the quality, but there's a tiny little line on the right side of the platform as well from between the last two uh, pieces. So we can go ahead and do the same exact thing. So it's this piece and this piece, and you can just select them in here. And once again, we need to move this uh, five units forward as well. So we can move these up uh, five units individually, actually, because if we move them singularly, it won't work. So this one needs to come up five. And then this one, we're going to move up to a total of 10. So that is going to go ahead and get rid of that issue. Same thing with this one. We'll move the top piece up five, and we'll move the bottom piece up 10. So now if we go ahead and hit compile, save, hop into the game, you will see that that platform looks like an entirely perfect platform, hardly any issues with it at all, and it's all joined together. So now we have our platform piece put together, and you can go ahead and do this with any number of pieces or any combination of pieces. You see them all down below. Um, you are in this little sprites menu here. You have so many different combinations that you can create of different floor mats or different uh, sprites and all that. So um, go ahead and mess around with it. Create little tile sets. Try and make your own little level items. Um, but anyway, now what I'm going to do is show you how to create your very own level and put them into the world. So what we're going to want to do is go to uh, the content folder down here at the bottom and we're going to create a new folder called levels so new folder levels this is where we're going to start all of our levels what we're going to do is right click create new level so you see this little option right here it says level we're going to call this level one you can change these to whatever you want at a later occasion Control shift s to save everything that we've done so far double click on level one it's going to ask you would you like to save what you're currently on sure save it this is going to take us to a completely blank and black level. So the first thing we're going to want to do is actually get that background item placed in. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead to this option that says perspective up here in the preview window. And we're going to go ahead and set that to front. So basically, this is going to give us a front view. We're going to see an X, Y coordinate plane, and we can just drop all of our level items into that plane and basically create our level without having to worry about um, misplacing in the Z direction. 
So this is our origin. This is our x, y, uh, 0, 0 origin. So we're going to build everything off of this origin. Note that our player is going to start right here until we put a player start in. So uh, it doesn't really matter because we're going to tell the player where to start as we get going. But just for now, we're going to go ahead and build off of that 0, 0 coordinate. So what we want to do is go back to our level items folder, our floors, our actors, and we want to get our floor that we just created, our base floor piece. And we're just going to go ahead and drop one of those suckers in right there on the 0, 0 axis. So when you go ahead and click on it, and you click on the details panel right here, um, on the on the right side over here, you'll see the location, X, Y, and Z. So we're just going to set those to zero, so everything's zeroed and centered, and we're going to move the Z axis to zero as well. So basically what we're making sure is that everything is centered around that axis at zero, zero, zero. Fantastic. So we've got our first piece. What we're going to do now is we're going to hold down Alt and click on this red arrow right here, and drag it out until we match up with this piece right here. Okay, what that did is basically just copied that same piece and let us drag it across. We can do that in any direction if we wanted to go up with it. We could do it like that. Um, actually, you're going to have to delete it after you do that. If you want to go like uh, longitudinally with it or something or in a, in a random direction, you can click this little button right here, this middle box, and you can move it freely anywhere in the same plane. So basically what this allows you to do is move these uh, pieces in the X and Y coordinates as far as the space is considered, even though it's the X and Z coordinates as far as uh, the engine is concerned. Um, X and Y basically like a typical uh, graph that you did in middle school. So anyway, um, that's how you go ahead and set up these tiles. So we're just going to go ahead and create a line of these tiles. So I'm going to go ahead and click on these. And you can actually control click to select multiple and do the same thing. So you can hit the alt and then click and drag and it'll drag both of them. So if you are just making a flat period of level, you can just go ahead and drag a bunch of these off at the same time. So once we've gone ahead and put together some tiles and drawn a little flat section, what we're going to want to do is switch back into our perspective view. So go ahead and hit the perspective option. From here, you're going to see our little tile sets that we've created. And uh, basically, they have a little bit of an overlap issue right there because we didn't use the flat end, we used the, the cornered ends. But we can go ahead and fix that later or create a different tile piece or whatever um, at a different occasion. Right now, we're just using this to show you how to do it. So if we went ahead and play now, our character's still just going to fall from nowhere because we don't have a character start actually placed into the level. So what we're going to do is switch back to the front view. So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to type in the top left corner up here, player start. What we want to do is just go ahead and drop that somewhere above the platform. So we'll drop it right there. Make sure that this uh, X and Ys and Zs are all set up properly. So basically that the Y axis is at zero. That way it's not popping out of the page. And now if we go ahead and hit play, our character will start right on top of the uh, platform that we had gone ahead and created. So we've got it all set up. Our character is ready to go. He's got his little platforms that he can run across um, and we can move around. And we've basically created our first little level. Now to make this look a little bit prettier, what we're going to do is drop behind the player area or behind this little level the uh, sprite that we got from the game that had like the trees and stuff in the background. After you find the sprite that was created for the BG file, so that should be in your sprites folder, uh, I'm going to go ahead and click that and drag it into the world. From this point what we're going to do is go ahead and scale it. So to scale it what we need to do is switch to the, the scaling option in this. So the scale option is up here across the top. Uh, you can also just hit R on your keyboard and it'll switch to scaling as well. So you can switch uh, either way. So hit the R key or the R key and W key switches back and forth. We're going to hit the R key or click this option to go ahead and scale our object in the X and Y directions. And then we'll hit W or we can just hit the arrows up here again to go ahead and bring it and center it on this little area here. And then what we want to do is we want to move this back into the page so that it's behind these tiles that we put on the ground. So what you're going to do is you're going to make sure you have your background selected. And you're going to go to this Y transform over here in the right side. And let me scroll up a little bit so it's not hidden by my webcam. You're going to go ahead and click the Y. And then what you're going to do is type in negative 3500. Uh, this is just moving it way back into the page so that it's not interfering with any of the uh, sprites on the front side like your character or the platforms or anything like that. After you do that, it's going to go ahead and hit save current to save the location change the front perspective back to perspective, and hit play. And you will see we now have our first level, or the beginnings of a level. And that is basically it, guys. So at this point, what you can do is go ahead and create any flooring types that you want using these different items. I'm going to probably mess around and make a couple of different ones and show you what I ended up creating, the final product of it, um, and, and the next part of the video. But at this point, you can go ahead and create your own level. You can go ahead and run around and through, throw different things, use different mechanics, and all of that great stuff. So what we're going to cover in the next video is we're actually going to polish some of the animations. So the fact that we can still hit J and K at the same time or spam our kunai and throw them like that, even though the animation doesn't run, um, we're going to go ahead and clean that up and make it so it's more of a polished sort of character. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. hope you found the video useful now that you have basically your own functioning game that you've just gone ahead and created. And uh, I will see you at the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe to stay updated on the series. And I will see you at the next video. Peace.